Good evening and welcome to ASI Hour. We're blessed to be here today and uh, to uh, tell you some more about what how the Lord has blessed us and how we've been able to uh, share our faith through different methods. And, uh, and we want to just uh, express to you how much we appreciate the opportunity of sharing Jesus. And uh, what, we want, what we want to do tonight is just to tell you some of the things that have happened in our lives through the last few years. But most of all, we want to let you know that the Lord can use each one of us. No matter who we are, what we are, the Lord has a specific work for us to do. Amen. And that's where, where, where it comes in today. And we're going to talk about how that through just stepping out of faith, we never know where it takes, where the road takes us. And how that through just one meeting, through so many things, events happened to uh, see many 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 people we, we don't know the number of people that are in the kingdom as a result of this and we want to make sure that everyone understands that as we talk about this that we want all honor and glory and praise to go to god amen. and god alone. Amen. amen we're not in this for ourselves or our glory because it's not important because we're just the tools to be used by him and it's such a blessing to be part of it and in this work that we have to do today, we have such a blessing to be able to be to be able to each one of us reach people in a unique and special way. And so with that today, I want to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, we had a little technical difficulty uh, getting the uh, pictures uploaded. And uh, so for me, who's not technically challenged or I am technically challenged, this has been pretty stressful getting this ready, but the Lord is blessing. And uh, thank goodness we have Curtis who's helping us on the back end, getting this up and going. And so we're just really blessed uh, to be a, be a part of this uh, great uh, program. And so um, with that, uh, Bob, would you lead us in a word of prayer to we, start with? We please? glad to. Let's, let's bow our heads. Precious Father, we are indeed grateful tonight to be able to have had a part and sharing the message of salvation to those around the world. And as we share some of those stories tonight, we pray that others will be encouraged to do the same thing, even though they think they're not capable, realizing only through the Holy Spirit these things will happen. Thank you for your love. In Christ's name, amen. 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 You know, Justin um, Justin always gives a sermon and talks about how that if the Lord can use a donkey, he can use anyone. <laughs> and... Uh, we tonight are going to talk about something that happened to us at ASI and how through this chain of events, uh, the Lord has blessed immensely. And, you know, normally we're talking about business because we're all from all three of us are in business. So we're, we're going to talk to you not only about business, but, you know, we'd like to try to we want to step out in faith. We want to ask the Lord to lead, open up doors, close doors that only his will will be done. And tonight we're going to talk, a tell you a story about something that happened that has had uh, uh, eternal benefits as we go forth. And so with that being said, uh, one of the biggest things that we enjoy is ASI. Right. ASI is one of the greatest organizations that's really helped us. It's changed my life. It's, I know it's changed our family's lives. Right. It's changed our children's life. My son met a girl that, she met at a, that he met at ASI. And so I have a wonderful daughter-in-law and just beautiful grandchildren as a result of uh, that reunion at uh, union. And, uh, and I'll tell you, the Lord has really blessed. And uh, so with that, uh, one of the most important parts of ASI is not just hearing the special mu special music or the, the sermons, which are all very good, but it's the fellowship that we get. And the best place to, to meet is in the booths. That's right. And the booths are the best place. And this is where this story starts is uh, the booths. And dad, why don't you start start? Well, I was in the booth at ASI, and Ron Watts, the division president from India, came by. And he was telling about India. And in India, we had been building some churches, and we were a little familiar. And I had just come out of Bangladesh. And Ron said, Garwin, what we need to do is a 10-church village effort. I said, what's that? He says, it's ripe. He says, India is ripe right now to hear the message. I says, well, tell me more about it. He says, we build 10 churches and we have an effort uh, that would be for those and with a center, 
uh, city that we'd mm-hmm. work with. And we'd bring people in and have this effort. So I said, he says, you need to come and do this, Garwin. I said, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> and then we went from, from there and I got to thinking, I haven't done this before. And then I thought of my friend Bob and people say, we're kind of like Moses and Aaron. Uh, and so that's how the effort started. Uh, it was it was a different experience for us. So um, with now, that, you started. Here, here, uh, here we are. Now, uh-huh. I want to say Maranatha was our our helped us organize this, the Maranatha team. Without Maranatha, this could not have been done. And they built the churches, too. See, that's what shows it shows that us all working together. Absolutely. I always believe the Lord always yes. multiplies. Yes. He never adds. We Absolutely. And here's Tonelli. That was our first place. Now, this is kind of interesting. Let's go to the next picture. Well, so. the one thing I want to say also, oh, yeah. though, is, uh, t- Bob, tell us about the Bible workers. Now, you, you just didn't just oh, yeah. have people just it's show five up. Five years. No, um, Global Mission, pa- Mission Pioneers, mm-hmm. I think is what they yes. were calling. Um, an ASI organization. Yes, yeah. it is an ASI organization. And uh, the job that they do, it's uh, usually go two by two, husband and wife that have been trained to do this. They go into a village uh, before we ever get there. Because that's what we were we did in in India in both places, which we'll talk about tonight, was a effort that was outreaching these people, not because of us only, but for many people that it helped get them started and get them aware. Uh, Jesus talked about planting the seed, and and uh, somebody cultivates it, and somebody waters it, and then finally there's a harvest, and that's what we had was a harvest because these global mission pioneers had gone into the villages. Um, the first time about six months and then after the series they went in another five years five years five years, five years. Totally they went five down years. for five oh. years small salary but uh, they went in and, and that's how they keep these people studying and keep them in the church rather than drift out as soon as the meeting's over so the one thing bob i want to say is how did you ever do your sermons how did you get everything ready yeah i'm i'm not the greatest preacher in the world but but it was a lay effort, so Garwin asked me if I'd do it, and and I looked at sermons, a lot of different sermons, and I didn't think they'd quite work in India, so we started studying and, and writing our own uh, sermons with the help of the North Pacific Union yeah. Conference, uh, Benny Moore and um, Dwayne, Dwayne McKee, McKee and, and um, uh, J- Bruce Johnson and and uh, Jerry Potzer and Jerry Potzer. Yeah, yes. they they helped us tremendously. They got us equipment everything they said we're going to do the best we can to make this work they were very evangelistic motivated they were they were encouraging their members to preach all over the world weren't they they were at that that. time yes and so you so you had them help you but i remember i was told you told me i think that you spent hundreds and hundreds of hours working on the sermons getting it ready for this uh evangelistic meeting yes that's exactly right and uh when we got through it was a very simple presentation of the gospel touching all of our 28 fundamental beliefs but not jamming anything down anybody's throat just sharing with them and giving them the message of salvation which is so important and so so you have i see that prayer because prayer is vital to any evangelistic yes. organization which we all know uh and and because we're just such a small part of it but what happened is you decided to have your meetings. You flew over there and had your meetings, and you announced that it was going to be at what time? Nine o'clock. Well, seven, wasn't we, it? We announced that it would be at seven o'clock. We did all the prep work. Now I want to tell you just a little story doing the prep. Work. Okay. Uh, I'm getting the screens ready, and in come five people with white shirts and ties, <laughs> and they said we want to talk. To you. And I thought they were preachers, so I gave them a little lecture about how. We come clear over from the United States here to work, and they weren't here working, and I expected them to help us. And we put up the screen. I had them painting the screen. They had paint on them and all that. And we got through, and they said, now can we talk to you? And I said, well, sure. They said, we're from the newspaper and the TV, and we're here to do a a preliminary report on your meetings. (laughs) I didn't know that. I just assumed that they were well, we, we, we needed to go to work. We thought they were preachers. But you know something? We got the job done. Yeah. 
So it worked. <laughs> when, they know, when they weren't working, we thought they were preachers. Yeah. <laughs> the, Sorry about that. Uh, you know, we started the meetings at 7 o'clock. Because that's what you do in the States. Yes. That's right. And we sat there. Nobody came. 7.30. No one come. 8. 8.30. I says, Bob, we got to go home tomorrow. How are we going to explain this to anyone? No one has come to our meetings. 9 o'clock, they started to come. And I'm going to show you a picture here. Here is the people at 9 o'clock from no one. It was incredible. They packed the hall. It was uh, here they show that they're responding. Um, it was just a tremendous delight uh, to work with them. And Bob is a good salesman. Now, he hasn't done an effort like this, but he would walk to work and then, or to the meetings, but he would go in with his Bible and ask everyone to come to the meetings, come to the meetings, stop at all the stores, anyone there. And they did. They responded. And during the day, we went out to the villages. And the person that helped us a lot uh, over the phone was Mark Finley. Mm -hmm. He was holding meetings in Tonelli. Or not Tonelli, in Madras. Mm -hmm. Madras yes. At the same time. But he would tell us. One thing Mark told me, you will get the crowd according to your transportation. If you don't have transportation. So we had the tractors coming in with people from the villages. And uh, it was very, very gratifying. Here's just a picture of the, Some of the, the ladies that were doing Oh, let me tell you about a church that was just off from here. We went to this church and they said, we want a new, new church. And I looked at their building. And I said, well, I, now this is in the evening. I said, well, I can't build here. You have a church here already. And I kind of passed it off, went, home, went back, we went to bed. About daybreak, I hear this knocking at the door. Here's the church member saying, come, our church is gone. They took it down overnight. Now, this was a kind of dilapidated brick structure. It wasn't it was. that easy. That's right. I didn't believe it. I went back out there. It was gone. So, naturally, we you had, had to build a new church. We had to build a new <laughs> church. <laughs> yeah. And here shows the end results. That, that, that's what makes it worth it. Mm-hmm. Amen. That Amen. Was tremendous. So, and they're there, but, but going back, I'm just going to back up here a second. How many people were baptized at this meeting? Probably okay. 3,700, I believe. Yeah. 3,700. I'll give you a little. We'll, we'll, yeah. 3,700 at this meeting. So 3,700 people. I mean, can you imagine? Here's two men that have never held an evangelistic meeting together. They step out in faith and 3,700 hundred people are baptized. Yeah, that's right. I will tell you, that was very inspiring. It was inspiring and sent a message throughout the whole world that right. lay people can all play a part in this uh, great work. Maybe we ought to tell a little story about Lakshmi. I think we should. And here's a yeah, picture of her. We've told that before, but it's always good. Yeah, yeah. This is always good to go over. Now, I want everybody to understand that we're talking about Tanali now. Later on, we'll be talking about Ango. This was the first series of meetings. And we didn't realize that everybody in that crowd that you saw was wanting each one of us to come down and lay our hands on them and pray for them. And so for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes after the meetings, we're praying for everybody. And while I'm on my knees, leaning over from the balcony or from the uh, stage to pray for people, I would feel a little tug on my pant leg every single night. And I'd look down and hear this precious little girl that is crippled from her waist down could do nothing but crawl around the streets of Tonali. That's how she got there. She was pulling on my leg, pant leg, and saying, please pray for me. Please pray for me. So every single night we prayed for her. And uh, Garwin, why don't you finish the story? Because you, you know the, the Here's a picture okay. of her. Yeah. Here just shows the picture of last me. But I want to show you the good, the, 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 all the time. Here Bob is carrying her down to be baptized. Now look at them, those lakes. This girl could not walk. It was it was just so gratifying. This she had a special personality. Seen, yeah. And of course, the ASI people have seen last of me when she was here. Then here's just another picture of her with uh, um, Elder Paulson when he visited. So you decided to bring her to the yes. ASI convention? We, we decided to bring her to the ASI convention and see if we could help her medically. 
and we carried her out on the stage in, in Michigan. It was just tremendous, um, the response to her. And we went, took her to the Mayo Clinic. Bob Horner, who was an ASI member, evaluated her there mm -hmm. at ASI. We took her to the Mayo Clinic. We took her through the Mayo Clinic, and they said the best place to help her is in uh, India at, at Valor. So we took her back to India, and then they rehabilitated mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Let's go with another picture. And then here she is. Here she is, walking with me over in India. Now, she had to have her braces she, braces on her legs and things like that. But this is the same little girl. This is at the blind school uh, setting. Now, today, here's last meet today. This picture is about three weeks old with her little boy. She is married um, and she is having a good life in India and she's expecting now her second child. And what does she do for a living? He, she. She's, she's a house. She's a teacher. Teacher. Who teaches? She's a yes, teacher. She, teacher. Yes, she went to Spicer and finished her education mm -hmm. and got and her became degree a and, and became a teacher. Mm -hmm. So from crawling around on the ground to this. And what's her husband doing? He's a, he's a preacher. He's a pastor. Yes. So she married a pastor. Wonderful. He, yeah. Wonderful. It's a wonderful story. Story. All wouldn't have happened without the ASI connection. So now we're going to go to the next uh, evangelistic meeting that you oh, decided this, to do. This was quite an experience. Yes. So oh, what? this is a place. Well, where is this here, located? Here again, Ron Watts. You know, Darwin, he says, what really India needs is a 50 church effort. Now, never done a 50 church effort. In fact, <laughs> only one big one, the yeah, Tanelli. And I said, he, he says, we'll build 50 churches at one time. Maranatha would be building the churches, and then we would have this big evangelistic effort. Now, we worked ahead of time, about a week. We got the site all ready. I remember going there about 10, 11 o'clock at night. We're finally done walking through it. The lights are on. It's beautiful. And, and, you're, getting, getting, and you're getting ready to start the next night. The next night, we're going to start. We're all in readiness. Then we went to bed and we woke up in the morning early and here is what we had. This is what a cyclone came in. The devil did not want that meeting to go on. Freak cyclone blew everything down. So they said, what are we gonna do? I said, Bob, get out there in the villages and tell everyone that we're gonna have the meetings tonight. And we went to work, we moved them. This is our screen we found in the morning. Yeah, no, that's not, not a nice thing to wake up to. Especially in a few hours, you're supposed to be preaching. That's right. right. That's right. But you know, we went to work. The Lord blessed. Uh, the we, Lord tur tur turned something bad into something good. He certainly did because everybody in, in the city knew it. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was closed. We said, no, we're open. So they're coming to see how we could do that. They didn't believe it. So you set it up and... Uh, this is your transportation crew. No yes, in this is Pat, my cousin. I put him in charge of the transportation and our team. Now we had buses lined up, tractors lined up, every form of, of equipment, and the buses would roll in and that. Do we have a video of we, that? We do, we do. But uh, what I wanted to talk about with Pat before we go to the videos oh, yes. is talk about what he else he specialized in. Well, Pat specialized in... Uh, I guess you call it demon removal. Yeah. Uh, it would be a kind of a business term. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had a lot of people were demon possessed. Mm -hmm. I remember this one girl was demon possessed and I tried to hold her arm down and she flipped me off like, you know, and I'm not a lightweight to throw around. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the strength and the demon possessed Pat actually was involved in casting out nine demons. One demon I seen where they cast out and it went into a fish, fish when we were baptizing and the fish attacked the people getting baptized. It was, it's a different experience. Here's coming. So here shows a. Yeah. Can we show this video? It should work. No. Well, they had, out there they had the tractors and then of course. Can you play that video, Curtis? 
people set up con uh, concession stands too. There were some. For some reason, this video is not coming through. It's okay. We may have to just uh, treat it as a picture if we. Okay. Seen, yeah. Well, what it is is a picture of a, a tractor, and in the back of it, they're pulling a trailer, and the trailer is full of people. Now, what we had, we had 260 some buses, trucks, yeah. tractors coming in. We had a team of uh, two people on each set of steps. The truck would roll in, and then we would go from there. The people would come off. Next truck would flag them in. They were going like a, a four-lane highway. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was just an incredible. Uh, very important to mention that not one person in all those nights that we were over there with that many buses bringing them in, trucks, tractors, nobody got hurt. Yeah, and it was in the dark. And, yeah, it was dark. A, and what's a miracle about that is anyone who's been to India, just even being able to drive there without having accidents is a yes. miracle. Yes, yes. Let yeah. alone, because it's just, uh, it is just really, here shows the back of one of the trucks, and that's how they came in. I wish, I, I'm sorry the video isn't working, it should have been, but um, it shows truck after truck after truck full of people coming in to see the meetings. Let me share with you about the owner of this truck line. Uh, a good place to mm -hmm. tell me when. Uh, he came after the meetings were all over, and he said, this has got to be some type of a miracle that's happening here. He said, I rent buses, trucks, tractors, trailers all the time. And he said, never do I ever have less than 30% of them break down. Of all the buses and trucks and tractors and trailers we rented from him, not one broke down in the two and a half weeks that we were there. And he started studying the gospel, and he's a baptized Seventh-day Adventist Christian as of today. Amen. Amen. A miracle. So we also, here shows a picture of Bob. Here shows a picture of you showing your graphics uh, and a picture of you into the crowd. And uh, this shows one of the pictures of the crowd. And uh, we're going to have to go to the next uh, set of slides. We don't have Curtis. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is the one I wish we could work because this is unbelievable. The crowd, and it's not showing it. I apologize. But picture this picture as you see here and put took, take it times three. And that's what the video would show you of the amount of people that were in the audience. The and you can see the stage right up here. There's the stage. The last Saturday night, I would like to say there was 35,000, but Don Schneider had come over to be there at the final weekend, and he said there's got to be 45 to 50,000 here. We couldn't see them all. They were back so far in the crowd. But uh, the Lord blessed in a mighty way. And uh, um, maybe uh, we're, we're cutting a, uh, another slide here, but maybe I ought to share about my driver's side. Yeah, please because do. Because if we don't do that, we'll, let's we, do we that, please, to, before we do the our next driver's slide. Side, my driver's side, the first week when we, or the year when he was over there in Tanali, he had an old beat up car that wasn't running too good, but I want to tell you something. He kept it clean as a whistle. He was always there. He was my driver and my translator always sat with me in the back seat. He'd drive us out to the villages. Sometimes it'd take two and a half, three hours to get out to these villages. And on the way out to those villages, I would preach the sermon of the night at least twice coming and going. My translator would translate it in Telugu, the language that they, were, they use in that area. And my driver's driving, just driving. Second week, Garwin had bought him a Toyota that they needed a new evangelism car, and they bought him a Toyota. So that was my car for the week, or the two weeks that we were there. And my driver would do the same thing, out to the villages and back every single day. And uh, we would do the same thing, preach the sermons we're going to preach that night, translate them. And, and uh, on the Thursday before we left, my, my translator was in the back seat, and he said, Sai, and that's abbreviation for a Hindu god, was the name of my driver, Sai wants to talk to you. And I said, oh, good. I said, you know, I've really ignored Sai because he's been so good. He's got water here for us. He's everywhere exactly the right time. And I went over and talked to Sai. And through my translator, Sai said this, nobody in all of India has heard the story of salvation more than me because I've heard it going and coming two and three times a day as you was driving out to the villages. And I've accepted Jesus as my Savior. And he said, I want to be baptized. And I want Amen. you. To, he want. He said, "I want you to change my name from Sai to a Christian name," and I named him 
Robert Dean Paulson after myself. <laughs> and he sent messages with, with Don Noble and, uh, and Karen uh, Godfrey several times to tell Bob Paulson hello for me if you see him. And she did. Anyway, he said, that's not all. Real quickly, this is so important. He said, that's not all. I've taken this home to my family. He said, I've shared it with my kids, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. He had 27 people ready for baptism, and they were baptized before we left. Amen. Because he heard that message while he was driving me. Mm. It's amazing what the Holy Spirit will do through you. Amen. Amen. So that's just a couple of stories. There's many, many stories here. But uh, this I wish I could show you because this is a picture of uh, one of the dedications of one of the school. The, one of, yeah, actually, this is um, uh, the, the, church. 50th, the 50th church dedication. And uh, we have Don Falkenberg again there in the picture and so forth. But I want, it's kind of interesting for this. Don piece, Schneider. Don Schneider. Don Schneider. Don Schneider. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, for this dedication, they gave me a white pigeon to release. Now, <laughs> they handed it to me. I took two hands and I got up and I made my little talk to the group and I lifted it up over my head. You don't squeeze a pigeon over your head. <laughs> he found out how. all over my face <laughs> so i learned another thing in life but it was uh taking a good good spirit amen amen so here's a picture of the baptism it's one of the baptisms. Some of one of the baptisms well some of them there were many many and every day there was many 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 baptisms. baptisms and here shows a picture of uh, what it looks like in the this is the, the crowd we were hoping we could show you the video on it. Yeah, yeah. a lot more, but it, you can see the you can kind of get an idea of the magnitude. Oh, of the it. magnitude is just thousands upon thousands, and every one of them, you they come forward for prayer. We we had Aaron Ron Watts says uh, Tonelli, he's how are we going to get out of here? I said only one way: you got to pray your way out. Mm -hmm. So Amen. we it was uh, quite an experience, mm -hmm. to say the least. But here again, Maranatha was very key in making this all happen. So what's happened since that time? Well, let me give you some of the figures. Tonelli was started out as a 10 village and became a 13. The one along the river and there were a few others. And, and then from, and there were 3,700 people baptized. Now, Maranatha built another 15 churches around Tonelli, the ones we put up that had spawned. Mm -hmm. So over 40 congregations in the Tonelli site alone. But on goal, on goal was incredible. That was a 50 village. Um, and there were over 15,000 baptized there. Then thousands of more have been come baptized as a result mm -hmm. of this. In fact, the membership of Entrepreneurs right now, is over 1 million people. Mm, amen. And this was a big contributing factor that started, started the, the gave big the foundation. evangelistic push in India. We were there when the window just opened. and But then many others have been there. Yep. And The Farleys, some, were, weren't they involved oh, in Farleys it? Farleys are very involved. Very involved. Uh, the, the, the academies the, built. Uh, there are just numerous. Yes. Numerous. Yeah. Uh, Gar Garwin and I were interviewed on 3ABN, and and uh, um, one of the Farleys was down in uh, in Arizona. The other one was up in Medford, where they live. And uh, the son, or the dad, called the son, and uh, they talked together. And the dad said, "I know what you want, son. You want to go to India because you saw just what I just got, got through seeing." And the rest is history. Bruce. I think over to Bruce. Bruce, yeah, and. Uh, for the next what ten years, they they went over and did evangelistic yep. series every year. And and, and let me just uh, how people share an ASI family. The Farleys were supporters of Three ABN. Mm -hmm. That's right. They called Danny, and they said, "Danny, India has opened up. We would like to switch our support to the work in India." You know what Danny said? You need to go there. He mm -hmm. volunteered to you know, work with them in going to India. So the support then went to India instead of 3ABN. There's not many ministries who do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, but you know what, what's really exciting about that is that, so as we talked about as in the past is that, you know, we had a, we were blessed and had a business and we sold that business. And when we sold that business, um, 
you and I both were supposed to work for him for a certain period of time. Yeah. And that lasted for about a month. And then at the month they said, we'll continue to pay you, but don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> and I know that sounds great to people, but when you're working the hours that we worked and did what we did, um, we were kind of lost. We really didn't. We were, we were, we were really kind of lost. I really, I really thought, Oh, this will be great. I'll have time off. I was so bored after a couple of weeks. Uh, Donna looked at me and said, this isn't your office and I'm not your secretary. Go get an office and go get a secretary because you need to get something. You need to get out of the house. And it just so happened that pastor Finley called, called me and he said, uh, Denzel, we're doing this program called X 2000. And, um, I'd like you to coordinate uh, the meetings uh, in Romania. And I said, Mark, I know nothing about evangelism. And he said, well, you know, you know, you know, marketing, you know, management, you know, sales. He said, you're just going to do it for the Lord instead of doing it for profit. And you're going to do it for free. <laughs> and I said, well, let me pray about it. And so I talked to Donna and we prayed about it and we said, okay. And so that entered a journey for our family as being involved in evangelism from a different point of view from the back end and, and doing the coordination. And so we went around the world looking at what evangelism was doing and then coordinated a evangelistic in Rome, evangelistic series in Romania. So while that while we were doing the coordination of that, um, d- uh, Bob and dad had done this uh, group in this program in Tenali. And, and what happened also at that exact same time, as we mentioned at the beginning of the program is that, Dwayne McKee and um, uh, Benny, Moore Benny Moore and uh, uh, Todd Gessley and uh, uh, I'm going to forget a bunch of names here, but several other people uh, were together and they were working in the Pacific, North Pacific Union and they had figured out how to take uh, pictures when uh, Dwayne McKee was preaching in Africa and he was able to digitally alter the picture and take instead of showing culturize, uh, it, culturize, it, culturize it. it. So, you know, right now, the only thing they had at the time was Harry Anderson pictures, which showed white American angels with white American people going to heaven. Out of Africa. And out of Africa, which didn't, they couldn't relate to that. And so what Todd did is he digitally, this is when digital cameras were first coming into, just first coming in. And uh, he digitally took the picture of an angel, changed the color of of the angel and made it an African angel with Africans going to heaven and Africans receiving their babies, their lost babies. And, and then Dwayne, uh, they took pictures of the crowd when people saw those pictures and they just exploded. I mean, they just couldn't believe it. So he had just, Dwayne had just gotten back from that. And we were at an, at an, it is written partnership. And we worked very closely with it is written through all this. And we had seen what Bob had done and, and dad had done in, uh, in India. And we said, How do we make this duplicatable? Because if Bob and dad can do it, basically we should design something so anyone can do it. But if you, but, but in all fairness, if you ask me as a banker, how do I preach the evangelistic meeting? I would say, I don't know because I'm not educated enough. So we said, what if we design an evangelistic series that anyone could preach because Bob had done it, but he spent hundreds and hundreds of hours developing sermons. We need to make it simple and be able to cover all of our beliefs. And so the concept came up from that is why don't we design an evangelistic meeting that anyone can preach? And that's where kind of the idea came from, from all these things coming together. For the new beginnings. With the new beginnings. Well, at this time, and I'm going to just show you another picture. Oh, before we do that, uh, before I need to, we're, we're, I've got ahead of myself here. That's right. No problem. But, um, but we, so I'm going to just pause right here and why don't you tell us this picture because the rest of the story goes with the rest of my okay. pictures. The, the, in, in Bangladesh, um, it's hard to tell you what uh, these guys have built up there, but the, the academies they build are amazing. Um, Garwin asked me to prepare um, some week of, week of prayer. prayer. Thank you. Some week of prayer uh, meetings that we could have. So, so over a period of seven or eight years, we had about four of them up there at this academy way in northern Bangladesh. This was the last one we had. And after a week, and these kids are all going to school here. They live there. There are dormitories for all of them. And they've been studying about the plan of salvation, about Christ and him crucified. And then we have these week of prayers. Now, my wife had written a little book that I call a book. 
out of Desire of Ages and one out of uh, Steps to Christ. And I was able to take what she wrote and what it was, the descriptions of Jesus all through Desire of Ages. And I made those into a week of prayer. And when we got through, we always had a nice baptism. These kids are the ones that were baptized the very last uh, week of prayer that we ever had. I think there was around 150 kids. And we had to have every one of them get permission from their parents before they were baptized. Amen. You, you, uh, uh, Angie. 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 And there's, uh, yes, the secretary of the general conference is in that meeting as well. And he said this when he came in there. He said, Mr. Paulson, I cannot tell you. I had no idea that we have an academy like this in our whole division. And he was so thrilled to be there. And we sh shared with him a lot of things about the kids. Amen. And he was very good, very, very happy about it. Same school, we did a, a presentation of the New Beginnings, which you'll talk about right now. But as we all know, prayer is the most important Amen. part because without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. That's right. And we are, we're, we're just tools to be used by God. And it is such a blessing to be able to be part of that. And um, so we developed this New Beginnings program. And then this is, has uh, sermons that cover all of our beliefs. And you know that old saying that a picture paints a thousand words? Right. That's right. Well, we had 3,000 pictures on here. And so we did that. We had a lot of pictures because as a layperson, you don't want them to look at you. You want them to look at the pictures. And it tells the story. And we actually got the Aurora Award, which is the top award for presentations that year with It Is Written. And we worked closely with It Is Written and Don Gray and the graphics and developed this evangelistic Mark tool. Finley. Mark Finley, excuse me. Mark Finley in this evangelistic tool. So we did this training. So... All of a sudden, we're trying to figure out how to do this. We're building up this evangelistic tool. This took a long time. This took about uh, a year and a half. And Bob Falkenberg was having it was was starting to talk about the idea. The idea was culminating on doing um, a share him program, which we all have heard of before. But he hadn't really started this yet. And so he called me, and he he called me, and on the phone, and he said. Denzel, I'm thinking about starting a program called, uh, he hadn't even called it a name yet. And he said, uh, where we get lay people to preach and do like what your what Bob and your dad has done, but then make it to where people can set up the, the behind the scenes. And he started going through his program. But I'm looking for about eight to 10 people that could be prototype who would, would lay people who would go out and be our first uh, trial of doing this type of program. And so he put left that on a message on my phone, and I was traveling at the time. And as soon as I landed, I called my wife Donna, and she she said she played me this message on on the on the answering machine. And I said, well, I don't know who could do that, but I'll think about it. She said, well, think about it, pray about it, and we'll talk when we get when you get home. So as soon as I got home, she she takes me right over the the machine again and plays it again. And I go, okay, I got to think about who should play, who who could, who could go preach. And she said, well. You know, you're trying to design an evangelistic tool that anyone could preach. And if you could do it, anyone could do it. <laughs> so I think you ought to be part of that group. And I thought to myself, really? Oh, I don't know how to preach. I can't do that. And uh, then um, uh, she, then I started thinking, well, I know other people that should go. And pretty soon the idea came of getting a group together to, to be the prototype of doing the evangelistic uh, meeting that we, we eventually held. So during this time, we're trying to work the sermons. We're trying to figure out what to do. And so we got our group together that was going to go to the Philippines to hold our first New Beginnings Evangelistic meeting. And we decided that we would go to uh, the uh, North Pacific Union uh, Conference and have, the, have a training program. And Dwayne McKee and Benny Moore and the team up there was going to uh, show us how to do evangelistic meeting. Well, it just so happens that they went to do an evangelistic meeting, another great ASI member and he, this is the picture you're seeing here of uh ron oliver he is an accountant uh he owns an accounting firm and he went over to be the behind the scenes helper in evangelistic means that they held in africa well what happened to him was is they had more sites than they had people and he ended up preaching now ron's a very timid person he's very quiet and he's an accountant he has accountant personality and when he got up to tell his his um his expression and he started talking about it i uh i asked him in the meeting i said ron how did you feel after you did your series 
And I'll never forget this. He started tearing up and tears ran down his face. And he said, I can't describe it. I just can't describe it. I don't have words to describe how I feel seeing people come to Jesus. Yeah. And Amen. when he when he did that, I will tell you, I even get a little teary to thinking about it right now, is he, um, I, I looked at him and I go, I want that feeling. I want to have that feeling. And so uh, we did our training and then we went to the uh, Philippines. And back then, uh, DVD players were very uh, expensive. Ooh, uh, I, a 300 Lumina projector was $2,800 a piece. Uh, DVD players were $300 a piece. Now, we did the same thing. We hired Bible workers to go ahead and to, to do the, the preparing of the sermons. And we did 10 sermons. But we tried different ways. We wanted different people to do different ways of doing it. So we had a husband and wife. We did co-preaching. We did uh, uh, a father-son team. We did we did a women's only team. We did a men only team. We did uh, young people teams. We did all these different types of teams. We had one person that just preached, who was a really good preacher, preach the whole series. And so we let everyone try different ways of doing it. And of course, we were worried about it because none of us even knew how to run a DVD player back then. And so we, um, so we had young people come from Wachita Hills Academy. And so we had two young people from each that went to each site. And we went to the sites, and I partnered with Dwight Hildebrand. And uh, we went and we preached. And I will tell you, it was an experience. The first night at the site we had, we picked the furthest side away, way out in the, in the jungle. And um, every night it grew and grew and grew. First night there was probably four or 500. And by the last night, there was 1,500 people in this small remote <laughs> village that we even had to pipe electricity into it because it didn't even have electricity into it. And you didn't kneel because you'd get shocked. So you had to wear rubber shoes because the grounds weren't working and things like that. But at the end of the meeting, we saw 3,078 people baptized in one day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when we saw that happen, we realized that the Lord has given us a message because not only did it happen in India, but it happened in the Philippines as well. And then we said, we got to make this, we got to get this out. We got to start doing it. Well, there was a few naysayers and said, well, you know, India is easy, even though we know it's not the Holy Spirit works. They always said the Philippines wasn't easy. And so as a result of that, uh, I was visiting with Mike Ryan uh, and he said, well, let's pick a country that's more difficult. So we said, sure, let's do that. And so we decided to pick the country of Cambodia. So here's the DVD players because we armed the area with, uh, we gave DVD players to each one of our global mission pioneers. And here we are teaching them how to use the DVD player and setting up on a, on a TV. And then we handed it to the people. Now this lady, I came back 10 months later after we'd given the DVD players and I never forget of it. I looked up at her <laughs> and I said, how many people have you given the complete message to? And she looked up at me and she said, sir, I've given it to 800 people. Hey, man. I said, 800 people, no way. I said, you know, I'm a banker. I look at numbers. <laughs> 800 people, that's that's a big evangelistic number, right? And she said, no, I've done it three times a day, every day for the last 10 months. Huh. She gave it to three different groups 10 times. Amen. And so she Amen. gave it to But she wasn't the only one. There was a couple other people that had done 800, 700, 600. The women beat the men. The men, the best man did less than 500. But, but, it, but, but through that experience, we were able to grow. And our family with the Ryans, we held an evangelistic meeting in, at, we rented a boxing <coughs> stadium in, uh, in Phnom Penh. And Justin and Christina, my children, they preached the series. And here it is, the buses in the background. And, the, and there we had a great team of people. We had, we had children's ministries. We worked with um, uh, the ministries of... Um, Oh, I'm forgetting the name of the. Please forgive me. Uh, names of one of the of our of our ASI ministries that specializes in children's evangelistic meetings. We use theirs so that when we preached uh, a topic in the main sanct in the main auditorium, they preached it at the with the young people as well. Young disciples, young disciples ministry, and uh, there were over a thousand kids in just the meeting alone, uh, just for the children's meetings. And uh, there's a picture of them preaching in the boxing, but we had a beautiful baptism. And uh, we baptized a tremendous amount of people. So over a five year period of time, 
we went from a membership in Phnom Penh from uh, three three hundred to over three thousand. Look, look at her face. And look at her face. Isn't that just that's why it's so special about it. look at that face. And you can see that water is not a water you really want to dump. It's like it reminds you a little bit of the Jordan River, but it's the ocean. Uh, but um, you can see the joy in her face because she now knows Jesus. Amen. Amen. And there's Christina. When you when you uh, greet people over there, you don't shake hands. You uh, you give them you give them the sign. And uh, so so after that, in our family, everyone had preached an evangelistic meeting except for my wife. And so she decided she better go and preach. And so she went down and preached with Shareham down in uh, in uh, Panama. Well, when we're down there in Panama, I met an ASI member who actually had a home in Panama. And I told him of what happened in the Philippines, in uh, Cambodia. And he said, I'd like to do it here. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll send you the discs if you buy the DVD players. He said, sure, I'll do that. And so he bought DVD players. I showed him, told him how to, to do, give it to the people and do the training. And just verbally, we did that. And then he, he, I sent him the disc. And about uh, uh, 10 months later, about seven, nine months later, he called me up and said, I need more discs. And I said, what happened to the discs you got? And he said, you wouldn't believe this, Denzel. Every week we're having baptisms because of the new beginnings. Amen. Because we're giving them out and they're putting them into the homes. And so when we saw that happen, we said, this is the key to making it duplicatable. We equip and train lay people. So we got together with the general conference and the personal ministries direction, and we started um, we started uh, uh, developing a new beginnings kit. And um, you know, one thing I want to back up and say that when we held our evangelistic meeting in the Philippines, we had some tremendous help. You know, we had Pastor Finley helping us. We had a lot of different people. I'm going to forget Royce Williams. Uh, Louis Torres gave us training every day uh, at our school because I'll tell you how what it was. We got the discs the day before we flew out. So we had no time to prepare, no time to do anything with our preaching. We just, we got the preaching. So literally I would get up at four o'clock in the morning, study the sermon. We go to class. Then we go visit, visit the, the villages. And then we'd preach in the evening, get home around 10 o'clock at night and start that old again the next day. And I will tell you, when we did that, I never got tired. No. The whole time. It we, was just amazing. The same thing. Yeah. It was just amazing how the Lord gives you the strength uh, when you're working for him. Yeah. So we started the idea of buying DVD players, giving them discs, training them how to use it in their homes so that we do small groups and then come up with a reaping series afterwards. That's and we true. started doing this. So when we started this, we started like, here's a picture of what we gave out. And uh, we've had young people. The youngest person we know that's done this series is eight years old. Wonderful. And the oldest person we know of is 92. Hmm. So if you're between eight and 92, you can do you this. Do yeah. And um, and we've got small groups. You know, you can do it in really small groups like this one here. This was the first uh, time they'd ever used it. And they, you can see the little battery operated um, DVD player. That you see right there on the right there and that was the first one ever um uh ever had As a matter of fact it was the first one that first came out with a battery operated dvd with and, a and what screen was, was that? What was this it? was in africa okay this is in africa here where they did this with a small group and the largest group we know of was uh, uh eighty thousand people in papua new guinea Ooh. where it's been done so in other words you can go to one up to eighty thousand. we i think we could do even more if we needed to so in other words there's no limit. God has no limits of what we need to, where we need to accomplish. And so we decided we'd try it in three places to start this program. The first place we went was Moldova. And this is Moldova here. And we trained him on how to do this. Pastor Finley and I went there and uh, it was 50 below zero, five, zero below zero. The coldest I've ever been in my life was in Moldova. And uh, we gave it, but I will tell you, it was really warm in the church. Because here they are holding up their DVD players. They went out and they had baptisms. And to make a long story short, they baptized more in one day than they had ever done in a whole year in the history of the church. And they did it. They did it with uh, just uh, the lay people sharing Jesus. Another picture of the baptism. 
And then uh, these is people from uh, uh, the former uh, Soviet Union, the Ukraine area that went together and they, uh, they were teaching on how to do the new beginnings. They're showing hospitality in their part. And uh, this is one that we actually did in uh, uh, Panama. We also, this is Pastor Mike Ryan, and this is, we did this one. And uh, these are actually Vietnamese that snuck over the border into Cambodia. Cambodia yeah. And uh, we trained them, and then we gave them the DVD players and the discs, and they snuck back over. And there's all kinds of stories about that. One story I like about that particularly that I heard about is one of these uh, lay people, you notice they're all the backs, their heads because of, uh, because it's still a communist country, is they were uh, having a meeting in their home and they had the DVD player and they had, they were showing it. And all of a sudden the police came in, broke in the door, knocked in, the, broke in the door and says, what are you doing here? You're doing something illegally. And uh, he says, well, I'm sharing Jesus. And the police chief was in the, came, came and looked at it and says, let me see those materials. And to make a long story short, he is a baptized Adventist Amen. today. Amen. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is just here in Cambodia. We also did in Indonesia. This is in Jakarta. Here we are giving out, uh, doing uh, the DVD training here with Pastor Mike Ryan. And then Dwight Hildebrandt is there with us uh, doing the, um, handing out the DVD players. You know, one thing is about the evangelism that's so important. Here we're doing it again in uh, the Philippines. And the point I want to make here is that this has been done all over the world. And it's still going on today. Yeah. And um, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If I could, and you might be touch on it, but uh, so I may be getting ahead of you. If somebody out there that's listening to this right now that's never heard of the New Beginnings but wants to get something of that nature, how do they do it? Uh, go to the ASI website and you can go to the link and download it. Now, today, we don't have discs anymore. You can download it for free. We have training materials for free, and you can do it all. At one um, at one time. It's on ASI, on ASI website. website. Yeah, yeah. Now it's all digital. It's a little bit easier. You don't have to have it. This was interesting because this is a matter of fact. He just put it up here. Put the website up here on the on the link. Yeah. So if you like uh, to learn more, just simply click on the button, and <clears throat> it'll take you right to the ASI hour or sorry to the ASI New Beginnings um, link there, and you'll be able to download amazing. Uh, materials that can be used and uh, it's in 4k widescreen now um, HD <clears throat> so uh, I'd encourage everybody to uh, take advantage of these amazing materials and experience for yourself the blessing of sharing yes it's, it has been such a blessing you know Dwight Hildebrand puts it the best way he says when you share Jesus it's like a disease and there is no cure yeah. because you want to do it over and over and over again here we have Radim Passer, who is from the Czech Republic. He came and did a DVD. He went with us to DVD training and got the bug. And he actually does evangelistic series every year. Even, even uh, today, he does evangelistic series uh, in his country, uh, sharing Jesus. This, yeah, man, this young man here was uh, 78 years old, and he rode a, bu he rode a boat uh, uh, over 24 hours to get to us to buy, get the materials and he, he stayed with us for the day and then drove to 24 hours back because he was ready to help with another. He had a meeting ready to start as soon as he got back to his home. That's wonderful. And then this young man here, yeah. this I, I, I could show you a lot of pictures about. What really impressed me about this man is that we went to uh, Malawi and did the DVD training. We did an ASI meeting there and we did the DVD training. And the next year I came back and did a presentation for ASI. And he came up to me and he said, I just want to show you this. And I'm not going to show you all the pictures of it, but he showed me picture after picture after picture. He sells plants. He's, he owns a nursery. He's a true ASI member, but he held three evangelistic meetings in the year between when we were, uh, when I wasn't in Malawi, when I was away from Malawi. And when he came back, he gave me pictures and I carry it in my Bible today of all the people that he baptized in that year. And he had baptized over 80 souls, and I counted them in the in the in the, in the pictures of all the people he had baptized. But look at the fit, look at the picture of his face. Sure. Look how happy he is because you can't. I mean, the joy you receive in sharing Jesus, it just can't describe. Sure. And um, then uh, then we also did it in Cuba. And this is uh, this is our team that went to Cuba, and we we did DVD training throughout Cuba. Each one of these, I could spend an hour just telling you stories on what what is going on, and uh, 
in Cuba. And uh, there, uh, a lot, some of you, uh, a lot of you know um, Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz had sold his business similar to what we had done. And when I met with him, I told him my experience, what I've been involved. He said, well, Nancy and I, his wife would like to do the same thing. And it just so happens as we were talking, he says, do you know any place that uh, that could uh, that needed help that you thought that I thought he could go to? And it just so happens we were driving to an ASI meeting. He was driving us there. He asked me that question. And literally within 40 minutes, Pastor Finley calls me and he says, Denzel, there is a great opportunity in Cuba. We need to figure out how we can get people involved in Cuba because there's an oppor- there's a window of opportunity we need to take care of. We need to figure out how to get into Cuba real quickly. And so I talked to Ruben and I said, Ruben, what do you think about Cuba? He said, well, I love Cuba. He said, and plus I speak Spanish. And besides that, I'm Portuguese. I can go to Cuba. Americans can't. And so he was able to take the resources the Lord had given him and been able to take that go to Cuba and do the DVD yeah. program and train people there and give people the opportunity of sharing Jesus. And we went there to help him with that on one of our trips. And so the Lord just really blessed. And it just shows how the Lord takes our businesses and our talents and uses it for him. Then we went back to, of course, Africa. There's many, many places in Africa. This story real quickly, and I'm going to overrun out of time. What's really, what I want to point out here is these two men here, these two young men here on this side are laymen. Uh, they're just, they, they work in the construction field and they brought into the church, a b- bishop from another denomination, his wife and the head elder of one of the churches. This man here was in charge of six, six churches in his region. Just by doing the new beginnings, he was able to bring in people of faith of another denomination that just shows the power of our message and how that, uh, it's so powerful that anyone can preach it. But as we know, the key is that seeing souls in the kingdom amen Amen. and as we as we uh as we finish up this uh hour with us i just want to urge and challenge each one of you to get out of your comfort zone share jesus in a in a mighty way because we know he's coming very very soon amen amen so anything you want to share before we bob before we Uh, just appreciate the opportunity to share the lord is blessed in a mighty way for Lay people that want to just get out and get their feet wet and, and try something. I mean, we appreciate it. Well, you know, it's very interesting. Now, I just want to say that the New Beginnings is going on around the world. Many people have been involved. I'm just told you a few of the stories that I've done. There's been other people. B.R. Cotterama has been involved in from the beginning. Lisa Hodges and Barbara Taylor, those two have done more training programs than anyone else uh, of our lay people together. Um, you have Rodney Bowes that is involved with it today and has done training and all the people at Light. And there's just there's so many people that have been involved. I'm missing many people. And but I just want you to know the Lord knows. Like yes. you, Dad, you always tell me the Lord has what? Best calculator. The best calculator. Yeah. We know the Lord has the best calculator. And that's the only one that's important because souls for eternity. And the question that I want to leave you with today is what is going to be your story when you get to heaven? Amen. Amen. Appreciate the challenge, Denzel. And I think that's that's one that we can all um, really seriously take and and allow maybe even even uh, tonight just to pray about, Lord, where is it that you would have me go for this time that I would be able to share a testimony in heaven? Um, and uh, so I just thank you for uh, being willing to share this evening. Uh, this amazing testimony of how how not only God has worked in your lives, but how God has used um, you to develop this this amazing tool, um, the New Beginnings, and how it has has been such an effective tool, and how anyone who's listening tonight can take this, no matter where you are, and be able to use it. And so, uh, please consider uh, clicking on that link um, to just be able to access those materials. Um, and uh, looking forward to maybe another ASI hour where we can hear more testimonies of how God has used the new beginning. So thank you so much for just sharing how the background of how new beginning started with us this evening and just how God has blessed um, in using this amazing tool. Thank you for doing that. And uh, just want to welcome everybody to join us again next week. We have uh, the ASI hour, the ministries track. And so we look forward to seeing each of you then, not only uh, each of you joining, but also bringing a friend. Please consider 
uh, bringing somebody else that would be, be able to be blessed and equipped and challenged uh, in our uh, effort to finish the Lord's work here as uh, he's entrusted this to us. Uh, Curtis, before we close in prayer, I just want to urge our members here to, uh, if you've not registered to come to the ASI convention, do it quickly. It is filling up. We thought we were, we were a little worried about the fact that we didn't have very many registered, but I want to tell you that we are, we're going to be sold out here pretty quickly. And so uh, we want to, we, we want you to come. We want you to be part of it. It's going to be thrilling to be able to fellowship together finally and be able to share what Jesus is doing in each one of our lives and how we can be inspired to do more to, because we know in these world today, I mean, even the things we heard today on the news, uh, we know the Lord is coming uh, mm -hmm. very, very soon. Yes. So with that, uh, right. Dad, would you lead in, sure. would you close in prayer, sure. please? Our Lord, we thank you for the privilege of sharing Christ in the world and around and with ASI and the involvement of our ASI family. It's a privilege, and may we go forward, and each of us be more like Jesus. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you much for sharing this evening. It was such a blessing, and uh, really appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you for all you did. Sorry we had to, had that snafu to begin with, but I think it turned all right. out well. So. All right. Good night, each one. We'll okay, see you next week again for the ASI Hour. We'll Have a good night. Bye-bye.